tell me when we are talking about the residential business, there's one particular model, that novel model that you introduce in the real estate market is the mandate business approach. And of course, subsequently, we have seen other players you know, adopting to the same, uh, uh, you know, same way of approach in terms of creating mandate business. But you being the starter and the creator of this mandate business, I want to know from you, which was that pivotal moment where you realize, okay, this is the way to go ahead, especially in this particular market, to create that benefit for the developers, also to have a, you know, mutual benefit for both you and the developer. I think you researched it very well. I must say, is uh, it is it is true is that uh, we were the first ones to have really got into the mandate uh, model. Uh, there were other residential broking agencies, yeah. uh, but they were doing uh, we call it as open market, uh, not as uh, receiving a mandate, exclusive mandate for sales in the market. It was a tough one. It wasn't that easy. I mean, to go to a tier A developer yeah. and say outsource your sales and marketing to me, yeah. it's a tough one. Uh, because you know they're like why okay we will be happy to you know outsource it mm. but what if it doesn't get sold uh, are you underwriting are you going to you know uh, put your balance sheet at risk for us mm. will you pay the balance money whatever is unsold mm. from the commitment that you gave us and we would say no because you know we, we don't want our balance sheet to get into the risk uh, you know we also didn't have that kind of balance sheet as well mm. <laughs> Um, so it is a tough one to go mm. to to the guys, and because uh, the senior leadership had been in the business uh, for a very long time, and they had seen our demeanor over 20, 30 years, that you know who we are, what we are doing, it. We explained where where it was. They started with doing one, and then they discovered this is very nice. Uh, you know the sales that these guys are able to bring in mm. is one uh, much quicker. That means the momentum of sales is, uh, is is there. And second is there is a science that they are bringing in. You know, whether that science is the way that they're doing digital, uh, the way their technology and dashboard is there, the way they have brought in the artificial intelligence and mm -hmm. the machine learning into yeah. this is. Um, can a developer do that? I think they can do it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for a developer, there's so many other facets. If mm -hmm. you look at it, they have to buy land, yeah. so their time spent there. They have to get in all the approvals, they have to get the design done, they mm. have to then construct the building, then they have to do the sales and mm. uh, marketing, and then they have to manage uh, the property. So sales and marketing will be once amongst the six. Yeah. Uh, if somebody wants to specialize, they will be able to specialize. But from their perspective, they are like, you know, if Analog has specialized in it, mm. we might as well outsource it to, uh, to, to Analog and you know, let them take on the responsibility. And by the way, over the last five, six years, we've seen is that our data remains very secure uh, with our raw. And largely, they're able to deliver what they promise. Mm. Um, so that's where it started with great difficulty. Mm. I think today, God is kind that the phone rings uh, and we get inbound leads mm. uh, from the developers to say, guys, you know, we're doing a new launch. Mm. Uh, you know, can you come and please meet up with us mm. uh, as we would like to outsource this because mm. we believe is what momentum of sales you're going to be able to bring in and the science with which you're going to be able to do it, which means the predictability yeah. uh, of the sale is going to be far superior than mm. what necessarily our teams will be able to deliver. But honestly, tell me in the initial stage, it must have miffed few developers, right? That they must have felt that all the control because for a developer, sales is very important. They would not even adopt technology, but they would make sure that the sale Sales part is in their control. So did you miss few people in the initial stage? Uh, so it was tough. Uh, yeah. You know, fortunately, what we did was we invested ahead on the technology. So, you know, our, our CRM, which is what we built as a bespoke mm. CRM, we would give the iPad to the developer. What that did was the developer would be able to see real time how many leads are coming in, mm. how many site visits have happened, how much closure, how much discussion. At any given time, he could press a button and listen to live conversation that is happening between our agent and the buyer on the call. Okay. So, so, you know, we empowered the developer mm. to say is the power is still with you. You will see real time mm. what is happening, how many unattended leads mm. uh, are there, you know, uh, how are people are conversing on the phone with a prospect mm. um, and, you know, are, you, are they being able to represent your brand or not? And, you know, how the conversion, how the funnel is mm. being built up. I think that really eased down the nerves. 
because that really showed the developers that okay this is what the progress is this is what we are able to see if we didn't have that dashboard mm. i think they would have been missed so you know there were uh, certain promises that we were not able to keep in the timeline uh, that we would have promised the developer but because there was huge amount of transparency through the dashboard they could see that they are not being able to deliver within this timeline but it will happen because they could see that the inquiries were getting built up the yeah. site visits were happening the conversion discussions were happening conversion may not have happened as yet yeah. but they could see through the uh, dashboard so i i would say is that really helped us yeah. uh, to bring in the tech and then empower the client which is yeah. the developer through the tech so that they could transparently see what on a real time basis was going on so you must have noticed the other players which i i have mentioned that when you came up with this model a lot of people have adopted this model so what we are seeing currently is when a mandate business is being offered by any company they want to uh, get involved from the beginning meaning that if you have taken the land the construction has started how the communication how the creatives how everything will go from the that stage to how it should be portrayed how the tagline of the brand should be from all the creative front so of course the builder takes a back seat and they have to give that control to the mandate business so what is your take of course noticing all these players in the market what's your take on that how it's going for the current market um i'll, I'll answer it in two parts one is uh, you know the market is really big enough um you know 84% of the indian real estate market is residential yeah huge market 16% is commercial and other asset classes if in 16% you know there could be like 6 7 credible ipcs the international property consultants then in 84 mm. there could be like 30 35 anorox yeah in there so one that the market is very large on the residential given that it is like five six times the commercial mm. uh, market is second is uh, from the perspective of end to end we discovered that it it is required because mm-hmm. otherwise you know you are going to become just arm and leg you just going to become a commodity yeah we wanted to be the brain as well mm. to be the brain you had to be the guy who would do the tagline who will do the creative mm-hmm. we've now gone back in one more step to say we will help you design the product we will help you understand in that micro market what the customer need is do they need two bedroom two and a half bedroom how big is the kitchen going to be how an ideal layout yeah. needs to be is we will help you do that because we have so much of data in those uh, micro markets so please take the inputs from us even before you're getting on to the design yeah. don't bring us once you have done the design and you've done the tagline and you've done the positioning of the product just to do the sales and marketing yeah. because we're not going to be effective at that time but if you have taken our input right from the stage that you are doing the product design and have our teams involved then we will be a lot more effective because we know what the consumer preference is there what the communication so once the product is done what's the communication that we need to do what is the go to market you know what is the tagline mm. that you have to do and then comes the sales and marketing now as anorock you know we were not the best guys on creative uh, you know we are like uh, many accountants here Mm. Uh, who are there so you know we we are like very process very transparent very tech uh done is we then went out and bought a company mm. which was a creative company company called as think tank a uh, very yeah. creative guy called as uh, abhishek majumdar he he owns that mm. and uh, you know he ran that through the covid mm. uh, we we did the mna uh, with the think uh, think tank because they were creative and mm. we needed someone who was going to be able to do that uh, creative the good thing is because the underlying platform is tech mm. what happens is the 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 moment the sales guy gets a, a, a notification on his mobile phone mm. that a buyer has come in and mm. you know he clicks a button and it connects to the buyer he speaks or she speaks and then disconnects the phone and then there are four options is the buyer coming to the site mm. if they didn't like it you know what what is it is the budget not uh, right etc etc four mm. options so one of the four options the sales agent you know punches it yeah. that real time is going to our digital team who are looking at that marketing mm. and they are saying is guys this campaign is not working why it is not working because creative hasn't done the right job 
Yeah. Or creative has put in a very low price just to attract people to come in. Mm. But our sales guy is not able to take it up. So change the price or the communication on the creative is not being able to, not being understood by the prospective. Mm. So it's a very harmonious relationship right from the sales guy, all through tech, from the sales guy who is saying is that the buyer is not wanting to buy this to the digital guy to say is either, you know, a particular portal is doing well mm. or not doing well. So double down on spending on a particular portal if they're doing well, if they're not doing well, stop it. Usually this all is a postmodern that you have to do and third is to go into the creative and say is guys change creative this very moment yeah because all three sit next to um, all, all the two the digital and the creative sit next to each other mm. and they're able to communicate they're all under one roof as Amara. Mm. i think the trouble is where these are all three different units yeah sales and marketing is different mm. digital is an outsourced agency that is different and creative is a very different outsourced agency. Then it takes a long time mm. for the chain to get rectified. And usually this all happens then post facto the event. What didn't work? Mm. We're like, you know, we don't want to do a post model. Yeah. We want to understand at that moment, what are the steps that you need to take to change it? So that's where uh, I, I think our differentiation is. But having said that, you know, the market is very large. But market being very large, it must even create a bit of uh, conflict for you guys where the developers are having this kind of conversation, you know, in terms of pricing. He, he's also doing this and providing this us, but it's in the lower cost. I'm sure these conversations would have happened in your cabin. So how do you avoid such conversations? When you say pricing, is it the product pricing or is it the that fee? total fee they are talking about? Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's in every service. Yeah. Uh, it depends. As you know, how do you position yourself? Uh, what's the value that you're being able to provide to the client? How does the client perceive you? Mm. Uh, even in JLS, uh, even in CBR, even in Cushman, they'll have different pricing uh, for different products. Mm. Uh, you know, it's like a, it's like a, you know, Gucci bag, uh, you know, which is kept in there. Is mm. you know that Gucci bag could not necessarily cost that much at which price it is being retailed, but it is the perceived value True. that you're being able to create it. And that's how you're differentiated. Yeah. Uh, that it is, you know, how, what's the value add that you're being able to bring into the customer? Mm -hmm. And depending on the value add, what's the fee that you will be able to charge? At which fee the customer is not going to cringe? Yeah. At which fee the customer will be happy? At which fee the customer believes that there is a value that you bring on mm -hmm. to the services that uh, you are delivering? That's an interesting analogy which you just gave. So I would ask on that further is that I would say the analogy based on what you just said, Anarok is in a top premium when it comes to managed business, right? So I'm sure you have the control when it comes to having a certain criteria or checklist of having what projects or what developers, especially for managed business. So what are those checklists when you consider such, uh, you know, developers or the customers making sure that it's a mutual beneficiary, you know, partnership? Uh, so it's a very interesting question. Um, you know, we made our share of mistakes on that particular point. Mm. Is um, you know, initially we thought any project we take, we'll be able to sell. Uh, you know, we thought we were like larger than life. Mm. Uh, then we discovered that the home buyer is far more smarter than what we are thinking. The home buyer only wants to buy from a tier one developer. If we were picking up a project of, say, a tier three developer, with whatever effort we were putting in, mm. even at the discounted price of that particular product, we were just not being able to garner the sale. Yeah. Because this market, through sort of COVID, has become very discerning as a consumer. So the consumer is differentiating a better quality developer with a lower grade developer, even if the lower grade developer was to give free benefit. Mm. and this give a discounted price to the product, mm. the buyer is just not wanting to buy irrespective whether Anarok is selling or anybody else is selling. True. This was our misunderstanding. We thought that if we come on a mm. product of a tier 3 developer and you know either discount the price or give freebies and we are Anarok, we will be able to sell it. Mm. No. So that's when we realized this, that you know you have to get into grade A developers. Because the buyer is only wanting the product of a grade A developer. Yeah. They're not wanting a product of a 
great C developer, irrespective of your marketing, you know, creativity or spiel or pricing, whatever you may do is. Mm -hmm. Now the challenge became even different because grade A developer has grade A team and grade A developer has really uh, sort of a phenomenal sales team mm -hmm. to be able to say to a grade A developer that, you know, outsource it. Mm. Uh, it's, it's quite an interesting dialogue. Yeah. Great C will be happy to outsource it because, mm. you know, when they come in, when they look at it, mm. they're like, guys, you're far superior than, you know, we guys are. Please take it. Mm. But we're saying we don't want now great C. Not, not because we don't want it. We're like finding that the buyer doesn't want yeah. great C. And irrespective of our efforts, we're just not being able to sell mm. uh, great C. So we moved on to grade one. And that's where we have continued to add value into Adderock because our thought is mm. that this market will move towards pure grade A developers. Mm. And if you have to continue to exist and be meaningful in your existence in the market, then you have to demonstrate value add to a grade A developer. Yeah. And that you can only do it if you are better mm. than the teams that the grade A developer 